What is the value of measuring skills data and how should companies approach it? Well, so we talked about scoreboard principle and I want to give you a story that I think um, really uh, illuminates some of the value here. So again, the scoreboard principles measuring the factors on which you're trying to improve on and then keeping track of those on a daily basis. And one company that has done that extraordinary, extraordinarily well is the Ritz-Carlton hotel chain. And uh, in the book, I talk about how it is that they got to where they are. And one of the metrics that they are um, fanatical about is net promoter scores. And I'm sure everyone uh, listening to this, if you're, if you're in the podcast, you're, you know what that is, but uh, just to, to illuminate it for those who are not familiar or just want to refresh, uh, net promoter is the likelihood of a guest recommending your hotel to a friend or a colleague. And the reason they're so gung-ho about that metric is because they realize that it's not just about having customer satisfaction. What you really want is you want people raving about your hotel to their friends and colleagues because that is what is going to lead to more bookings in the future. And in doing that, in having, in collecting net promoter scores, uh, uh, as soon as customers leave uh, the hotel, um, and, and, you know, keeping the entire team uh, uh, monitoring those numbers on a daily basis, one of the things that the Ritz-Carlton has discovered is that what really drives that metric is solving for employees, um, not, not just their expressed requests, but their unexpressed needs. And so uh, what I mean by that is, and I give the example in, in the um a variety of examples based on some of some of which are based on my kids experience at the hotel uh you know a, a an expressed request is does the hotel have a uh cafe and uh the answer to that is you know yes technically the answer is yes but if you're solving for an unexpressed needs what you might say is it does would you like me to make your reservation or would you like me to text you a menu that's not solving for something i haven't asked for but it's an underlying it addresses an underlying concern in the case of my kids my son lost his goggles and at the pool and he went up to the person uh, working there and he said, hey, have you seen my goggles? And they said, uh, no, I haven't. Would you like me to get you a new pair? And they, he's, he was, uh, I think, five at the time. They took him to the store and they bought him new goggles. And it's because every employee at the hotel has a tiny budget that they don't have to ask for permission for, that they can just address a customer concern. And all of that came from understanding and valuing uh, the metrics and the metrics of net promoter score. So to the extent that you're monitoring metrics, you're able to identify drivers that may not be obvious, but that you can control. And so those are leading indicators that you can then start to tinker with in order to drive your ultimate outcome. And so I can't, you know, I can't say enough about the value of metrics. There's an entire chapter of it, on it in Decoding Greatness because it's the first step to getting better at anything is identifying your metrics. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe via your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.